an NCAA national champion. I guess wasn't not. sure what to make of the kid from 2,500 miles away who came in chewing gum faster than his mouth could move. But Montana State Hall of Famer Dan Brelsford quickly found out that Rusty Squire was a ferocious competitor and a skier that always had the ability to give a little more than anyone else. Brelsford, who was a senior during Squire's freshman season, described him as a racehorse that was especially fast in slalom. Squire quickly adjusted to Montana and became a three-time All-America performer for the Bobcats. He also captured four of five NCAA West Regional Slaloms in 1979 and went on to place fourth at the NCAA Championships in Steamboat Springs, Colorado the same season. Squire finished fifth overall in the 1981 NCAA meet in Park City, Utah. After leaving Montana State, Squire continued to push limits in skiing, setting a world record for most vertical feet skiing in one day. Originally from Waterville, Maine, please welcome to the Bobcat Athletics Hall of Fame, Rusty Squire. Congratulations. Look right here. Congratulations. Right, thank you there very you much. <laughs> I was joking before I came up here with my coach, John Champany, and his wife, Vicki, about how I was the only guy in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> and then Andrew, who's sitting with us, pointed out to me that the volleyball girl is in black and white. So I said, I felt a little better at that point. You know, I come, to a, I come to a ceremony like this and I think a lot about the Robin Williams movie. Um, and I'm sure you've all seen it. I mean, if you have, raise your hand, The Dead Poets Society. Anybody seen that? Okay, well, this is the part where he comes into the room and he's got all those kids and they're all looking at pictures of the football team from the early 1900s. And he stands behind him and he starts going, Carpe diem, seize the day. Um, well, <clears throat> there was some further discussion about how all those people were now worm dirt, and I start looking at black and white images of myself and my hair, and I go, oh my gosh, it's not that long, is it? But, you know, awards are nice, but what I'm really grateful for, um, and, and I want to thank the committee, the nominating committee, and the MSU Bobcats, and Belinda, and all the people that helped, you know, make this happen, but I, I'm really, you know, really proud to be a Bobcat, and and, you know, all four years um, that I was here, you know, I think we had a, a deeply committed group of people that really wanted to make this team as good as it could be. And, and in 1979, the year that picture was taken, uh, we, we, you know, back in those days, there was no parity in athletic scholarships in the sport of skiing. So we had like maybe two scholarships at MSU, maybe two full rides. Teams like Utah had five. Well, in that year, 1979, Dan Brelsford finished third at the NCAA Championships. I finished fourth. Matt Murphy from Great Falls finished 10th. And we tied Utah for first place, which I thought, wow, that's great. Because we did not have that kind of strength. Um, but anyway, the people that are in this room are, are really what mean a lot to me. Um, you know, Coach John Champney recruited me here when I had been recruited to Dartmouth and to University of Vermont. Um, basically called me up and I looked up MSU and saw that Dan Brelsford had won NCAA championships and I said, well, heck, you know, if you want to chase somebody, that's a good place to go. Um, and, you know, Dan Brelsford, he's here tonight. I mean, he's the best skier in the history of Montana State University. He won the NCAA championships in 1977. And while I know there's, there's been a female athlete from the current Bobcat team that's won the NCAA championships for, for women, um, for men, there's never been anybody else like that. And so it's something special. Um, let's see here. I didn't really prepare well for this, I'm sorry. I got up at three o'clock this morning in Tucson, Arizona, drove to Mesa and flew here, so I'm trying to keep my wheels going. Um, there are a lot more teammates here in the room tonight. Ron Matlich, um, you know, um, also have um, Craig Kempt, um, you know, and Karen Hutchinson, who was on the, on the women's team. So th there's a bunch of skiers that are here tonight that were from that era, and I really appreciate them all coming. It's, it's wonderful to see them. Um, I'd also like to thank my wife, Elaine, who put up with me competing for two decades after my college career, and she was probably wondering if I was ever going to grow up. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Um, 
As it, as it said in that thing, in 1998, I became the first skier in the world to ever break 300,000 vertical feet in a day, and the first skier to ever ski over 100,000 meters in a day. But the thing was, and I think it's important to understand this, this wasn't all about vanity or let's go break a world record. I had a friend, and the friend's name was DJ Appleman. And DJ Appleman was dying of liposarcoma. He had a tumor in his lung the size of a football they had to take out. And in that final year that he was dying, he went around to all of the hospice centers he could in the United States of America with the physical energy that he had left. And he conducted a tour called the Harley that healed. And DJ did such a selfless thing for people that we thought it would be really cool to try and you know, create some kind of media hoopla and we got ESPN to cover it and we got um, about $30,000 raised that day and all that money went into the Eagle Mount Cancer Kids Scholarship. So if I ever want to be remembered for anything in my life, that's as much of, as almost anything that I would care to be remembered for is the fact that you know, I did something that helped the community and helped the people. And you know, to me, that, that, was, that was important. It's right up there with being inducted into the Hall of Fame. So. So, for all those of you that attended tonight, I appreciate it. Um, I know Randy Johnson's going to have a little after party at his house for the, the ski crowd, I guess. And some of you football players want to show up, and you tennis players, and all the other members of the Hall of Fame, you're welcome to. Um, I'm sure Randy can handle it. <laughs> so, I want to thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it.